and the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has called on Nigerians to put aside their political differences, saying it is time for them to build a strong country. At a press conference, the minister called on citizens across all divides to accept the Supreme Court's verdict for the country to move forward. Idris says President Tinubu has no intention uh, to restrict or gag either the conventional mainstream media or social media. Now that the legal contest regarding the outcome of the presidential election is now behind us, it is time for all of us to come together and move forward into a season of governing that is without any form of distraction. It is pertinent and it is important for all of you to know that the president is not in any way, form, or shape attempting or contemplating, you know, gagging the Nigerian press or any press for that matter. This is an open government. The president himself, being a Democrat, believes in the freedom of expression, and it is important that all of us uphold that. But like I said, every freedom, and especially press freedom, comes with enormous responsibility. As people are pushing out information and as social media has become part of our daily lives, it is important that we reorient ourselves and uphold the value of truth and honesty in everything that we see. And the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, uh, joins us now. Good to see you and thanks for your time. My pleasure. Uh, well, it's the first time you're with us uh, here mm -hmm. on News 9. And I know uh, you've actually must have been taking a you know, cursory look at uh, things within your ministry uh, before we actually get to what you just said uh, in that uh, uh, report. Uh, let us in on, especially on the orientation leg. But again, first, uh, let us know what uh, your ministry has been able to gather concerning our country. Well, thank you for being here. Like you say, it's my first time here. Um, um, like you said, I had uh, to spend the last uh, eight weeks, so to say, understanding uh, what the Ministry of Information and National Orientation is. Uh, we all know what we desire to be, but we have to understand what are the issues, uh, you know, what are the challenges, why is it not the kind of Ministry of Information that we all desire to be. So I spent uh, the last few weeks uh, understanding that, uh, looking at uh, uh, the agencies, uh, the departments in the Ministry of Information and National Orientation and, and uh, you know, trying to see what is it, what are those challenges that we can address so that uh, we could have uh, you know, the, the kind of Ministry of Information and National Orientation that we, we want to have. Uh, secondly, you know, the issue of National Orientation is at, at the burner of, uh, you know, in, in the front uh, burner of the Ministry of Information and National Orientation. The fact that it has been renamed Ministry of Information and National Orientation tells you that much. Um, you know that uh, trust in government and the country is, is, is being eroded. Uh, this is not who we are as a people. This is not what our founding fathers have left for us. So where did we get it wrong? What is happening? Why are Nigerians not talking about this country? Why is everybody talking about himself and his family? Uh, you know, why is even, you know, why are the young people trying to japa? What is the problem? Why, why is it that Nigerians don't believe in their country again? And it's not just about leadership, it's also about followership. So the national orientation is studying that and is coming up with, um, uh, with a strategy uh, you know, to, to reorient Nigerians uh, so that we can rediscover ourselves, retrace our steps, uh, uh, you know, so that we can begin to think as Nigerians once again. Fantastic. I mean, because I was actually going to ask what is the strategy that you have to put in place for, you know, Nigerians to, to begin to have a buy in again mm -hmm. so that the word uh, patriotism and all of that can be on the front burner. I'd, you, I'd like you to address that. But I also want you to quickly help us understand and expatiate when you say that, look, there, you, you, I mean, you pledged not to tell lies. Oh, yes. Sir. And I'm wondering, I mean, is it a veiled... Uh, statement uh, indicting maybe previous uh, information ministers have they been lying to Nigerians let me not use the word lie have they been prevaricating have they not been totally upfront with Nigerians and how differently are you going to do it well let me put it this way is it's not uh, you know inducting anybody but uh, I know and you know that uh, trust in government communication has broken down 
And what has led to that is that the, you know, the late uh, feeling that those in position of government are not telling them exactly what it is. Um, this is not a, a controversial thing, it's, it's a fact that we all know. So my, my mission is, why don't you begin to earn their trust once again? Tell them the way it is, so that they will believe in government. Because if they don't believe in you, the buy-in that you require uh, for Nigerians to you know, believe in you, believe in government programs and, 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 and projects, uh, will be lost. Uh, so my mission is bring back that trust in government communication. I think we deserve it so much. We need it. It has to happen so that Nigerians will now know that whatever their leaders are telling them is, is the absolute truth. It's sometimes it's a difficult one, I know. Uh, you know it's, uh, sometimes you have to navigate, right. but the truth has to be told. I, you, know, you can say it uh, in a way that is palatable. Uh, there's a difference bef between a, a cup half full and half empty. So uh, why don't you say it in a manner that is palatable, but still conveying the message uh, uh, that is so important to convey? You know, the exciting thing here is, uh, first, uh, you're a professional. I'm quite sure that many Nigerians uh, who knew you back then in your days, uh, even at NPAN, will understand. So you already understand two th key things here from the perspective of uh, uh, the message, uh, uh, the, the, the send of the message and the recipient mm -hmm. of the message. And again, I want to go back to the national orientation aspect of it. Uh, we're polarized, deeply polarized, and you spoke about the Jaffa syndrome, and uh, Ngozi asked, what tactics are you uh, going to likely employ? We may not go into details, but to convince a new generation of yeah. Nigerians uh, who uh, are always skeptical about uh, what government tells them. Well, the starting point is that we've asked ourselves questions. I've asked this question at the, at the ministry. Um, what is it that we want to have? Which country do we want to have? Mm. You know, it's not just uh, for the leaders, uh, for, even, for all Nigerians. Which kind of Nigeria do we want? Which kind of Nigeria do we desire? I think we begin to ask that question. So the starting point is that there will be a national get-together, uh, you know, a national conference, uh, if, if you will, to begin a national conversation of the country. Talk about the country that we want to be. What are those things that have gone wrong? We know that uh, uh, what we are seeing now is not what we have been. So what went wrong? At what point did we miss it? What are those things that made us to, to, to lose what, what, uh, what we have? Uh, our collective existence as a nation uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, I know that we are divided along so many lines, religious, political, social, economic, whatever. But what is it that you want a Nigerian to be? If you have a child, you don't teach civics. You don't teach civics again. So you, you said uh, English is compulsory. You say mathematics or arithmetic is compulsory. Why is civics not compulsory? These are some of the things that the National Orientation Agency and the Ministry of Information and National Orientation are trying to put out. We need to believe in this country by bringing back those values, those ethos that make us Nigerians uh, to begin with. So this national conversation we're about to have, which you know, is going to be led by the president himself, will come together to talk about, we've been talking about economy, we've been talking about polity, we've been talking about insecurity, have we talked about uh, ourselves as citizens? Who is a Nigerian citizen? Have you defined that? What do you want to be? So Great question. That I've I mean, that's a question <coughs> I've you know, asked before. As a matter of fact, we had the NOA uh, boss here some time back. And that was a question I asked. What exactly does it even mean to be a Nigerian? Now, you're going to be solving that problem, right? And it, it is assumed that you're able to... to say look this is where the problem is so this is how we can begin to solve it so how exactly do you plan to bring this nation together especially at a time when you know the country has been politically polarized and what have you would you be bringing mamsa for example are you going to be bringing you know patriotism um, americans would say to you look the pursuit of happiness is our objective what do you think our objective really should be as a nation, as Nigerians? Well, I think it's, 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 I don't have all the answers. Uh, this is why we are bringing all people to come and sit down and, and talk about it. Um, we know that we, we have Nigeria. We know that we want to be Nigerians. We want to have a good country. We want to believe in ourselves. We want to think as people that are important uh, to ourselves first and to, uh, to the world. So what, what is it that we need to do to bring that back? These are questions that we need to answer uh, by bringing all of us together. We've been having 
dialogues, like I said earlier, on the economy, on polity, on security, on whatever. Let's come together and say, look, this, we want, if you want to be a Nigerian, you need A, B, C, D. Nigeria will give you A, B, C, D. You will give Nigeria one, two, three, four. Let us have that, define that so that as a child, if you take a child to school, you know, his thinking is Nigerian. He, he begins to think about those values and those ethos that you inculcate in him. So that at the end of the day, he doesn't need anybody to tell him that he's no longer thinking about uh, as a Nigerian if he does something that is different. We used to have that. So the question is, what went wrong? You know, as we ask, uh, because th th those are not rhetorical questions, they're mm. questions that must be answered, answered. Uh, for, you know, mm. by everyone. But quickly, w w we saw you there. Uh, the elections are over uh, and uh, over and done with. You, you're all not concerned, like many Nigerians also, uh, hoves around uh, fake news and uh, uh, the, the worry mm. by some of your colleagues uh, uh, gagging the media. And uh, tell us how this is uh, for the government. Uh, in terms of freedom to practice uh, uh, journalism, your profession? To, to begin with, um, uh, Nigerian press is largely free, as you know. Um, President Bola Amechinu, as a Democrat himself, has pledged to make it uh, free. At, at least I've had that conversation one-on-one -on -one with him severally. Um, you cannot achieve anything by hiding so much. Information dissemination is critical to any government buy-in. So, it's not even wise for you to begin to hide information. And I said, uh, Mr. President, let us look at these things and let us tell Nigerians whatever it is. And he agrees. And you, if, you, if you see the way the president has been conducting himself, he has been trying to say it exactly as it is. Um, uh, it, it's, it's not helpful when you hold information or, because something has to fill in that gap. Right. Now, the issue of fake news, misinformation, disinformation, and what have you, it's not just a Nigerian problem. It's a problem that, uh, that you see all over the world. Um, I belong to the, the, the American Online News Association, I know, and I know what we discuss uh, at each, each time we met at the uh, international conference about the issue of, 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 of fake news and, uh, and the mass media, uh, the social media itself. Now, in America, only a few years ago, we saw what fake news did. It went to the heart of democracy itself. I mean, it led to, almost led to some form of insurrection. Some people went to the Capitol Hill and attacked, you know, the, the nerve of, of, of American democracy. Yeah. So this is a big lesson for all of us to learn. Now, because it's not a Nigerian problem, it's not an American problem, it's the world problem. Social media has done so much good, but has also done so much not so good. So we begin to now see if there is an interna international effort, international collaboration to even say, how do we in court now regulate? And I don't mean to say mm. gag yeah. right. or you know, uh, you know, attack freedom of expression, but every freedom, especially press freedom, like I've said over and over, mm -hmm comes with enormous responsibility. Right, uh, uh, before we let you go in 30 seconds, will the president be having media chats? Will he be open to it? Because previous uh, you know, uh, presidents have done that. Do, do, should we expect that? Mr. President will do anything possible to put information out there for Nigerians. Including media chats? Be, or including media chats. We're not taking it off the table. All well, right, thank you so much. Place, we'll uh, have to say thank you very yeah. much. Mohamed Idris as uh, Information Minister and uh, National Orientation. Thanks for joining us.